Hi everybody, this is Michael Badwe. I'm the Chief Business Officer and Founder at Supply Chain Junction. And today I'm really excited to have Jan Leperon from Manhattan Associates with me. And the reason I'm excited to have Jan is because I've been following Jan and his, I guess his journey to demystify and help people with order management systems for several years now. And he's a great industry expert. And recently, Jan, you published, um, well, you published several articles, but the one that I really wanted to talk to you about today was an infographic where you're trying to explain the roles and capabilities of an order management system. And that really caught my eye because it's really a simple way to, I guess, help answer the question that a lot of uh, companies are, ask. So could you maybe just take me through why you did that? And, you know, what's the, I guess, what's the core problem that we're trying to help so many of your customers and prospective customers solve? Hey, uh, Michael. So, um, you know, yeah, I've been in this business for uh, 10 plus years now, and then OMS have been implemented by a lot of retailers uh, all this time. But uh, I've seen really a, a great acceleration these last two years. And even this year, obviously, uh, with the pandemic, there's been a lot of, uh, of, of noise and, and lots of talkings about the OMS. But um, what I realized is that uh, decision makers in retail uh, sometimes still uh, have difficulties to understand where an OMS really fits in their architecture. Um, they also uh, sometimes do not realize what are all the capabilities that a system like an order management uh, can, can provide them. So I thought this infographic could uh, help them uh, with, with uh, you know, answer these types of, of questions in a, in a visual and simple way. Um, the, uh, you know, the role of an OMS is really to, to sit as at the center of the, of the retail landscape. Um, so I wanted to highlight that while it's there very central in its nature, uh, it's uh, also here to uh, enable um, and smoothen the, the, the connection between systems uh, by, by uh, breaking silos, which is really what it is uh, meant for. Um, the other thing I wanted to, uh, to talk about in this infographic is the, are the capabilities, mentioned the capabilities. Uh, an OMS can do a lot of things, uh, but you could see it as a, as a toolbox um, a set of capabilities that you can pick up from to get started with a, a foundation of, of an omnichannel uh, solution. And then over time, add up to it by, by adding extended capabilities, I have, as I have called them on that, uh, on that infographic. So it's, it's really a, a journey, uh, um, getting started with a, a system in the central, uh, establishing a foundation, and from there, um, um, add to it and, 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 and respond to also the changing business requirements of the time. That's great. I mean, it really was, a, I guess, a really simple graphic. So, so thank you so much for, for doing Thanks, that. It was really helpful. Well, we're right. going to reuse that a lot. Um, I mean, so, you know, you, you sort of explain a little bit of, of why you, you, you did this, but I mean, maybe could you just give us a couple of practical examples of how you've seen this deployed you know, with your customers um, and, you know, I guess how they benefited from, from this. Sure. So um, I think over the years I have realized that uh, an order management system is actually never a one size fits all solution. So every, every, every company will have different, a different landscape, a different history, a different sets of requirements to fulfill. Um, so, so I think from that perspective, uh, uh, auto, auto management system can be implemented in a lot of different ways. Um, I, I think the one key thing to have is in mind is that unlike ERPs and, and other enterprise systems which uh, have a pretty static configuration, the OMS is uh, precisely um, designed to actually uh, offer agility and, and evolve over time with new uh, set of capabilities. Um, so uh, um, that, that's, that's the usual way to approach this. So establishing what I would call the foundation. So a first set of uh, capabilities to get started and then over time uh, define with business what should be the next, next priority and, 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 and basically uh, use the auto management system to make all this happen. Um, I, I've, I've got a, a, a customer in, in Europe who recently uh, implemented this solution. So I think they're a pretty good example of, of uh, how retailers usually approach it. They, 
they wanted to uh, solve a few uh, a few problems and and, and so a few benefits in the OMS. The first thing they were they were after is to uh, increase uh, online sales by unifying inventory across their warehouses stores. Uh, uh, so that, that was one of the key requirements. And also they wanted their store associates to uh, uh, use a single application to uh, basically execute on the uh, omnichannel um, services that they were about to, uh, to, uh, to offer to their uh, customers. So they, uh, they started with the, a pretty simple ship from store initiative, a uh, tactical project, if you will, to, uh, to get started. And they already have a long roadmap of additional capabilities to, uh, to carry on with. You know, that, that's great. I mean, you know, order management often sounds like a very complex and, and challenging program because it's at the heart of, I guess, you know, not only execution, but flexibility and, and, and agility for, for, for many businesses. But is it that complex? I mean, how long does it typically take, you know, for, for an order management project? Right. So, so obviously this would depend on the, on the scope and, and every retail have a different approach to that but but what i see as a success factor is really to get started with a, a first set of capabilities to pilot so typically it could take two to three months we've done it faster uh, uh, to really uh, let's say put the oms in the landscape uh, make it start uh, fulfilling a first uh, type of order uh, uh, offering first set of capabilities related to in-store for example ship from store click and collect and, and really get started with the pilot on, on this type of capabilities. And, and after that, you can always expand your scope and that's what most retailers are doing. Uh, um, uh, I think one of the key success factors is to uh, uh, really uh, consider this in a progressive manner. So uh, look at what are all the incremental capabilities that the business wants to establish uh, and enable over time. So it, the list is ever growing. Uh, uh, so get started with the foundation and then basically have a system in place that will allow you to, uh, to build upon that. So that, that's, that's pretty common. And, and I think uh, one common pattern of uh, all the retailers that I've uh, worked with recently. Yeah, so, so I mean, uh, that's, that's I think something we hear quite commonly across the industry, right? So, you, you know, you mentioned about getting the foundation in place. So once that is in place, what is the typical next thing that a retailer will do. So they're up and running in two or three months, right? They've got enterprise visibility. Absolutely. Now yeah. what? Yeah, exactly. So actually what, what I realized is that uh, the toughest part is for the business team to actually decide what should, need the, what should be the next capability. They have a lot of uh, you know, ideas. They, are, they, are, they need to react quickly to how the market evolves, what the customer requests. So, uh, so establishing the, the list of priorities and what should come next is, is sometimes the, <laughs> the biggest struggle. Um, but, but indeed, uh, there's always a phase two, phase three, phase four, uh, per my experience. And uh, one, one example that uh, I could mention is uh, one of our uh, retailers uh, has uh, actually implemented the OMS in a simple way with uh, uh, enabling uh, store, the store visibility and adding to that uh, the warehouse uh, stock, uh, dedicated warehouse for e-commerce. And now the next step that they are envisioning is to actually make a better use of the OMS by expanding the sources of inventory that the OMS is going to look at. So they uh, decided to add to it the uh, brick and mortar warehouse, you know, the warehouse that uh, is in charge of fulfilling uh, and, and replenishing their stores. So adding this visibility to it as well as what they call inventory in transit. So inventory that's being delivered between the locations. So it's actually a source of stock that they can add to it and, and make the uh, direct to consumer fulfillment uh, uh, use, you know, as part of the respond to customer need. So that, that could be a typical uh, phase two, uh, a kind of omni stock initiative, if you will. Um, another typical way to expand the capabilities of an OMS is to look at the uh, customer service um, capabilities. So now that you have a system in place that manages orders, uh, regardless of their channels, you usually have the requirement to actually add more service to the customer, um, being able to modify an order, um, to capture a return or an exchange, and even to uh, manage the payment life cycle, which is another uh, great capability of the OMS. So that typically can be a phase two uh, of, uh, of such a project, uh, you know, starting simple with the enabling shim from store and then uh, moving on to the uh, more those areas of customer service. 
Okay, no, uh, that's, what, yeah, please yeah, maybe on. one last example uh, uh, that, that that could uh, that could mention is the adding new selling channels, for example, you could mm. online, and then maybe you want to add uh, the, the the store to web as we call it, so ordering in store, or or another typical use case is the adding the marketplaces. Um, a lot of retailers would uh, would also sell their uh, products on on external marketplaces, so the OS can really help there by. Uh, also be the source of the availability of products to those, uh, those channels. There's a, there's a lot to think about there for next steps, right? <clears throat> Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. So I was actually listening this morning to a podcast about uh, some Black Friday sales statistics, this being just shortly after Black Friday. And of course, you know, the pandemic has changed, I guess, pretty much the way everybody thinks about buying, you know, whatever it is that they need to buy. So, you know, what have you seen th th across the customer base and the, and the newer types of questions that you're getting asked, you know, based on, I guess, how the world's buying patterns have now changed from less in store to more, whether it be, uh, I don't know how we best describe it nowadays, but let's just call it not, not in store. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think the pandemic has, has changed everything and has accelerated all this so much. Uh, we, we are amazed by the stories that we are hearing from our retailers around the world who are, who are really, uh, you know, demonstrating resilience on, on the way that they've uh, approached uh, this and the way that they carried on with their projects and that where they uh, accelerated on some of the omnichannel initiatives. Um, some of them had implemented or started implementing their OMS for some time, but we saw, in the, you know, especially in the springtime, a lot of those uh, initiatives uh, to uh, accelerate on click and collect, uh, store appointments, curbside pickup, uh, and the list is so long. Um, I, I could uh, also think about you know, those stores being closed uh, and inventory, think about the inventory that was strapped in those stores for so long. So I think those retailers using ship from store really had that sacred weapon to, uh, uh, sacred weapon to um, actually uh, be able to leverage those uh, units uh, stuck in stores uh, to serve online customers uh, thanks to ship from stores. It was really uh, something that we saw uh, happen. Um, I could mention that uh, retailer, uh, jewelry retailer, Kendra Scott, um, they, they were on the OMS journey already, but they had not planned to implement uh, ship from store just yet. And so what they did in, back in April is to uh, actually uh, enable this service uh, or this capability rather uh, in just 10 business days. So from the first day of conception to the go live, uh, just 10 business days to uh, um, basically continue selling because their, their warehouse was going to close for administrative reasons. So uh, they had to use other sources of, of, of stock. So their stores were really the perfect solution. Um, so well, Ship from Store was really of great help. And, and uh, I think, yeah, a lot of retailers are, are now seeing these uh, you know, micro-fulfillment centers, stores are as, as, as many warehouses basically as a, as a great help uh, for that matter. Uh, another uh, example I have in mind is uh, that uh, jewelry, uh, sorry, that beauty retailer, um, which uh, also uh, adjusted their, their strategy during the pandemic. They were already doing ship from store in a number of stores um, to uh, you know, complement the, the online uh, inventory visibility. But what they decided to do is turn a number of their stores into what they call mini hubs. So really see those as strategic fulfillment locations, which they would uh, position uh, closer to the customer demand, which were not you know, so easy to serve from the central DC. So overnight, uh, thanks to a number OMS configuration change, they uh, increased the capacity of those stores um, to something I believe close to 100 orders per store and per day. And they also uh, increase their staff to uh, to fulfill those orders, but that, that's another good example, I think, of what the, the pandemic has uh, provided uh, the additional capabilities that were added during the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, it's it's amazing the kind of flexibility and agility, and I guess the speed that these these retailers and and, and other you know wholesalers have been able to implement changes to to support their customer needs. It's it's quite amazing. And I guess, Jan, you know, that journey is going to continue into the future, right? From capabilities of the solution. But, you know, capabilities are one thing. It's also around helping the customers to get the most out of the solution. So 
How do you see that sort of panning out in the next sort of 6, 12, 18 months? Right, yeah, I think the, um, I, I really like working in the OMS space because there's so much innovation happening in, uh, in that area. Every, every quarter we, we see new, new things added to, uh, to, to the capabilities list. I think in 2021, uh, we would, I would expect retailers to expand their, their, their usage of the OMS in, uh, in a few key areas. The first, first thing, as you were mentioning, is, is uh, looking at the service and, and how to better engage with customers from a, from a store perspective. Um, I think the store associates really need to have a, a better visibility on the customer. Um, so, so I think the, the retailers, we are going to request more and more for their store associates to have a complete 360 visibility on the, on the customer. Who is that customer? What, what's uh, he or her, his or her history with the brand? What's uh, their preferences? What's their, um, how, how many of, of the items have they purchased before? So all those uh, insights which will allow the store associates to uh, better serve the customer uh, and, and also personalizing the experience. So I think that will be a key area where uh, OMS uh, solutions will, uh, will evolve in the future. Um, another, uh, another one is, is basically um, for stores still to be able to increase their sales through that better knowledge of the customer. Um, sometimes retailers refer to that as endless aisle. So uh, um, the, the, the unit, the size, the, 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 the product that the customer is looking for might not be available at this time in the, in the store. So uh, uh, the OMS is here to help provide that global inventory visibility. Uh, where the, the item uh, might be located in other store, in the warehouse. Well, you give that visibility to the store associate and they can uh, basically um, increase their, their sale and, and also uh, uh, better uh, serve the, the customer. And perhaps one third and one last area where I uh, definitely uh, see that um, the, the OMS will continue helping retailers. Um, it's, it's all about how they uh, interact with the customer, uh, the different channels, uh, emails, chat, social media. So all those channels which the customer are, are using you know, to, to communicate with their friends, they want also to use them to uh, interact with their favorite brands. So uh, definitely, I think retailers will, uh, will, will expand on, on, on those capabilities. And um, self-service also is something where we see um, a lot of uh, potential growth uh, among uh, our retailers. Uh, the younger generation in particular, you know, they like to be in the driver's seat as far as uh, post-purchase activities are concerned. They want to be uh, able to decide uh, when they want to uh, return a product, which, which maybe uh, exchange they want to perform, uh, have a better view on their uh, shipment tracking. So in the past, sometimes you, need to, you needed to call a contact center, maybe wait for a few minutes uh, until your call is, is taken. So I think the younger generations now want to have everything in, in their hands and on their mobile phone. On, on, on an app. So uh, uh, that, that's, I think, another area where we will see the OMS develop in the future, um, as well as what we call pay by link, which is uh, basically also down along those lines are allowing the customer to take control. It is uh, a way for them to uh, basically finalize a, pay, a payment or, or enter an alternative payment method uh, whenever they, they, they need to, which will open possibilities for new selling channels like, like social selling. Uh, and we were uh, discussing before the selling from the store and last endless aisle. So to me, uh, that, that could be um, uh, a use case for the customer to finalize a sale, whether they were physically in that store uh, making the purchase or maybe the store associate uh, were, uh, was in a, in a video call, you know, a live streaming with the customer, demonstrating the product. So. Uh, Lots of possibilities and exciting uh, time, I think, ahead of us uh, in the OMS space. Yeah, it certainly sounds like it, Jan. I mean, I guess, so thank you so much for sharing this information with me and our audience today. You know, there's a lot of exciting things for the future, a lot of opportunities, obviously with the acceleration to digital and, you know, not, uh, less people going into stores. Um, this is going to become more and more prevalent um, and, you know, more and more companies are going to want to learn about this. So, you know, thank you so much for all of the, the, the articles you've been posting, you know, helping everybody to be educated around the topic and the benefits of the topic. And um, 
yeah, looking forward to talking to you again in the future and learning more and more about how we can all help our customers to you know, have better experiences and, 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 and obtain the goods that they need. Thank you, Jan. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Have a great day. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.